Now with shitty sketchy art as 2D gets used to his new tablet. Alright, you ungrateful kids, settle down and sit on 2D's lap. It's time for Shadow Run Story Time 16 The Tale of Felix Ramirez. A small town in Mexico, 2030. 10 year old Felix Rodriguez had a basic idea of why his parents were sending him off to Laz Technologies boarding school program. Ever since he'd been born, he'd been acutely aware of being special. Being special was not necessarily a good thing, and in fact it ostracized him from his peers more often than not. But his pointy ears and the strange little things that happened around him marked him irrevocably as special nevertheless. He'd get proper training on how to handle his strange new powers, the AS technology rep had informed his parents, themselves poor coal miners. The gods of the ancient Aztec civilization were showing favor on him, and it was nothing to be afraid of. He was even the rep used the term special. When Felix was loaded onto the bus and saw that almost every other boy was a large orc or troll, he felt even more alone. However, everyone was deeply respectful, stern, even. The AS technology Reho insisted that he be referred to as Hafer cheerily let all the boys know that, from this day forward, they would never be bullied again. Tenochtitlan. 2048. Operation Reciprocity is in full swing. Hold the block. Second armored needs to push through here in 15 minutes with a general. Lieutenant Felix Ramirez vaulted over half of a civilian car as a Shiawas RPG slammed into the storefront behind him, splashing glass and chunks of brick and mortar all over the street. Felix scrambled to his feet and dashed for what remained of his squad's APC, now a hunk of scrap flash welded to the street after a particularly colorful encounter with a Drake Prime detachment. Shiawas and SK were doing most of the heavy hitting in the capital itself, but Felix had heard horror stories of the Red Samurai being airdropped in Medellin. Of the strip mines going up in flames, depositing toxic flak into the surrounding countryside. As Ramirez slid behind the APC and reloaded his LMG, his mil-spec armor's interface alerted him that structural integrity was greatly compromised on his left arm. He'd taken a single grazing shot from an assault cannon earlier, closer to the capitol building, back when the army still held it. He'd thought that it hadn't done much except blast the decorative Blue Eagle warrior designs off the shoulder, but evidently the servos were fucked up something fierce. And his jarring movement wasn't helping. He hadn't managed to catch up to whoever it was firing the thing. But the steady thucker 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 further down the street let him know that his assailant tone of money wasn't especially far off. Ramirez focused his will, and called to him an aspect of Zucotl, the fire serpent. Gesturing in the direction of the Shiawas garrison building that stood between him and what remained of his unit, he yelled take him out as the spirit roared over the totaled vehicle. He rolled out of cover, shot a grenade through the window, and then began to lay down a blaze of suppressive fire. Screams rose up from inside the building as flames flowed out of the windows. Seeing his chance to move, Felix sprinted for the burning building even as he felt the familiar emptiness that came with the destruction of a bound spirit. Shiawas had two strengths, manpower, and loyalty. The building was filled with well-equipped paratroopers. Unfortunately for them, Felix was magical, he was better equipped, he was better trained, and he was better armed. As the soldiers inside recovered from the spirit's fire, Felix fell upon them like Hootsilapochtli himself, filling the room with armor-piercing rounds from his LMG even as he shot burning magma at the closest aggressors with the power of his mind. By the time he was done, the building looked like a charnel house, and he'd killed seven men. Felix didn't even stop to think about what he'd just improbably lived through, and leapt out the back door of the building. He could see his men garrisoned in a garage that they'd barricaded with vehicle parts. Corpse Cecil Deer and civilian Alicola littered the streets. He counted heads, Sergeant Major Contreras, the Jaguar warrior, was wounded but had propped himself up on the barricade, gun in hand. Tamayo, Herrera. Salazar, and Osuna also looked mostly intact, if shell-shocked. Luna, the squad's doctor, was tending feverishly to Batista, the sniper, Bid Batista, who'd been shot by a counter-sniper while he tried to provide cover fire for the team earlier. Looked like he wasn't going to make it. Status report? Contreras smiled a weak smile. The general's going to make it out. We've cleared the street out back, and we've got a good clear range of fire for when they push through the hood that you just came out of. There's a bigger stroll with an assault cannon, he's going to be first target, obviously. You think you can get him with your spells? Lieutenant Ramirez grimaced. His trog children will grow up without a father. That is a certainty. Hold the line, 
The rumblings of the mechanized division picked up behind the building, but the enemy wasn't pushing to intercept the VIP. In fact, no one crossed the perimeter. This doesn't feel right, growled Contreras. There was a loud droning from overhead, slowly getting louder. Felix looked up. Far above the battlefield were massive, bloated twin rotoplanes, done up in a garish red paint job with stars and stripes. Behind them trailed little black dots, dots that slowly got larger as they fell towards the ground. The entire squad solemnly put down their guns. Luna muttered a Catholic prayer. No one reprimanded him on following a non-Aztec religion. It didn't matter now. Raz, choked Felix, a single tear running down his cheek, as his guidance spirit grabbed him, preparing to whisk him away from the neighborhood that was going to imminently be his entire squad's grave. Raz Macro Technology, you American coxsuckers. As technology compounded the PCC, 2072, Felix Ramirez adjusted his tie for what had to be the 20th time in the last hour. It felt strange to be wearing a suit, to be banking on his looks, charisma, and talent for the first time in over two and a half decades, rather than his innate proficiency with murder. Less than a week ago he'd been in Bogota getting shot at by snipers. And then he'd received word of his promotion. To a jarhead like Felix, the civilian sector didn't constitute a promotion, even if he was becoming an assistant executive in charge of public whatever the fuck. He'd seen his job on the line against the Az Technology homegrown warrior program flunkies for years now, it was probably better that he got out while he still had the benefits. And that's what you'll do, at least in PR. You'll of course have other duties. Which reminds me, we've got a staff meeting for the security majors tonight, you'll be expected to show up at 7. Victor Gutierrez had been taking Felix on a tour of the building and opining on bits of corporate doublespeak that had flown far over Felix's head. Pulling his eyes away from the window, Felix refocused on the conversation. Right. I'll be there. Remember, Colonel, said Gutierrez, a weaselly little man in a suit that didn't quite fit him. We all know how hard it was to get used to a new workplace at first. His hand hovered insincerely over Felix's shoulder without quite making contact. Don't hesitate to talk to people. Felix nodded solemnly and entered his office, a privacy-less glass affair with a cushy synth for the seat and a nexus partition. He didn't speak to anyone until the mandatory meeting. The meeting was in a boardroom. A bunch of enthusiastic looking young majors and adepts sipped coffee and chatted, laughing at office gaffes and recountings of the latest telenovelas. Felix feigned smiles and returned conversation when it would be rude not to, but he wasn't in the mood. Gutierrez sat at the back of the boardroom and gestured for everyone to start quieting down. Slowly but surely, the conversation drifted out of the room. All right, gentlemen, said Gutierrez, with a smile, I'm sure that, considering last week's fiasco, you know what this meeting's all about. Horizon snuck a runner team into the basement, killed off a bunch of the spirits. We've got some spirits down there as a stopgap now, but obviously protocol will need to be restored. Volunteers? An orc security mage raised his hand, how much material are we working with? Gutierrez brought up a few sin images in our space. Two captives. One's a troll, though. Felix cocked an eyebrow. Wait a second, what do prisoners have to do with anything? I've got a few bound spirits, I could place them downstairs if need be. Everyone looked at Felix as if he was stupid. Gutierrez hazarded. Well, yes, but you didn't perform the proper rituals. We can't have half-rate spirits. This is a high security facility. It took a moment to click for Felix. Yawai I mean blood magic? But the corporate court outlawed it. A raucous laugh went around the entire boardroom. Gutierrez wiped at his eyes with a tissue. Yes, Mr. Ramirez, and I'm sure that MCT has stopped experimenting on Technomancers and Rinraku has stopped making artificial intelligences. It's a fact of magic. Sacrifice makes the best spirits. And at as technology, we don't settle for second best. Felix tried not to show the disgust on his face. Well, you're the new mage, Mr. Ramirez. What say we get you properly initiated? The other mages all nodded and looked at Felix in expectation. You he. That'd be great. Company spirit and all. Company spirits, Mr. Ramirez. When should we expect to see you down in the sub-basement? How about this weekend? Gutierrez smiled brightly. Excellent. Next on the meeting schedule catching the asshole who keeps stealing sandwiches out of the company fridge on floor 15. That night, with trembling hands, Felix turned on a disposable. 
and traceable Kamlinka holed over from the front lines dodging Amazonian black hat hackers and called up an emergency contact that he'd been saving for a rainy day. He said only this. Hello, Mr. Johnson. I would like to organize an extraction. Redmond Barons, Seattle, present day. Felix had been waiting in the bolt hole for two months now. The runners had entered the compound through the roof and extracted him via helicopter. Felix had left bombs around the compound as a distraction. He'd also set up spirits loyal to him within the various security checkpoints. He'd done everything to secure his freedom. Everything except blood magic. Their chopper had been shot down en route to one of the corporate complexes in downtown Seattle. The runners had directed him to a collapsed building in Redmond that they used as a safe house, and were keeping in case a direct handoff wasn't feasible. And then they had all died when a second missile hit, although Felix had fled into the sewers in the chaos. He had been, at the time, a bit concerned that maybe Johnson wouldn't be able to find him after this fiasco. He had been right. Felix was on his last can of pork and beans, and wasn't relishing having to step out into the city, but it looked like the extraction was officially off. Felix took a look around his apartment, tallying up his inventory. None of the outdated electronics in the apartment were worth trying to bring with him to sell. From the tread to the wall fan which was once a ceiling fan until the building had fallen over to the refrigerator that he was using to bar the door on the ceiling to keep the devil rat nest on the floor above from toppling into his bedroom. He had one LMG, one heavy pistol, one suit of as technology mil spec armor, still bearing its eagle warrior accents, one ballistic vest, three cum links, brand new, two fetishes, aspected to the Aztec faith, one bound guidance spirit, force eight, one fake sin, Pablo Hernandez, seven sets of clothes, one business suit, one sense of growing hunger, and 89 cans of mres, all eaten, Felix brought up Pablo Hernandez, he was listed as occupation male stripper, and yet in the sun picture he had an awful horse show moustache. Brilliant. Who the fuck did they get this sin from? Resigning himself to what was probably going to be a terrible fate, Felix donned a polo shirt and his ballistic vest, threw on some jeans, and hit himself with a movement spell. It was time to find a job. Felix had no idea how freelance mercenary worked. He'd been a corper for close to 40 years, and never even touched the business of shadow running except with movies and treadshells until his extraction. But he'd run out of food, his safe house was falling apart, and he needed money. Runners had fixers, right? That was how they got jobs. Felix plugged fixer bar into his cumlink and followed the instructions. What he hit was more like a fancy restaurant than a bar, which was something of a problem. He couldn't exactly sit down and order food, because he had exactly zero new in to his name. So, mostly he just stood in the waiting area, milling around, being awkward, and shuffling his feet. It didn't help that he was in a polo shirt and jeans with obvious armor showing. An attractive red-headed elf in a dinner gown showed up with a blonde man in a blue suit. Noticing Felix, the elf directed the man to go and get seated, and approach the Aztec mage. You look lost, sweetie. Felix had personally watched the light go out of men's eyes as he clutched the bayonet buried in their heart. He wasn't prepared for an attractive woman approaching him in such an awkward, embarrassing situation. He struggled to make eye contact. A little. Tell you what, said the woman, gesturing to the bar, we'll take 15 to see if I can help you find whatever it is you're looking for. Because, dressed like you are, it isn't here. Over a tequila cocktail which the woman had graciously offered Felix, given that he was completely broke, the woman explained herself. My name is Brianna McCreary. I'm a fixer with the Finnegan family. You know the Finnegan family? Felix slowly shook his head. Brianna cocked an eyebrow. Have you been hiding under a rock, or are you just new in town? Felix shrugged sheepishly. His answer came out with the tonality of a question. I left Aztlan two months ago and have been hiding in a bombed out apartment building since then. Brianna let out a whoosh of breath. Who boy? As he extracty? Felix nodded emphatically. Yeah, we get those in the biz occasionally. Well, the first thing you want to know is that, if you're trying to get into running, you don't show up at a fixer bar. These are private establishments. Only fixers and Johnsons show up here, and we pay good money to keep our business quiet. Felix's heart sank. Oh, Brianna swirled around her own cocktail, a peach bellini. However, I couldn't help but notice the Aztec fetishes on your belt, and I have a team that happens to be out a mage. Felix brightened up. You're serious? 
You're offering me a job? I'm offering you a position. Johnson offers you the job. You're a complete rookie, so the team will have to show you the ropes. Brianna handed him a business card that listed her as the owner of a local bar and grill. Show up at noon tomorrow. Don't be late. Any questions? Felix's stomach growled loudly. Um, could I get an advance payment of maybe 20 new yen for a hot dog? Brianna smiled thinly. Sure, but I expect to be paid back in full. Felix walked to the bus stop chomping on street meat, wondering what he was getting himself into. Felix wore his best suit to the faulty bar, only to find that it was a casual establishment. Evidently dress was a very peculiar thing in the running underworld. Undeterred, he marched by the old man in the trench coat at the bar, the half dozen young hoods congregating around the sports vid feeds, and marched up to the upstairs office. The first figure he noticed was the absolutely massive orc in the American flag bandana and armor jacket sitting on two folding chairs that had been propped up next to each other. He was working a plate of no less than three tree tip steaks, with a few remaining bones suggesting that he'd already been through one or two. The next figure was a thoroughly average looking fellow leaning back in a recliner that was probably normally intended for visiting Johnson's. Upon spotting Felix, he reached into an adjacent duffel bag and produced a ballistic mask done up to resemble the face of a smiling clown, and donned it. The eyes of the clown face lit up in a blaze of blue as the man began working in AR. Brianna herself sat behind the desk. Welcome, welcome. Go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Felix. Wait, fuck. A thin elf wearing an odd hodgepodge of hippie get-up tie-dye shirt, long shorts, sandals, buddhist sash and military gear bodysuit beneath clothes, red beret, military goggles, heavy police taser. Combat knife appeared out of invisibility. Don't use real names. Give us your street name. Felix recovered. The elf glared at Brianna. Great. You got us an Azzy and he doesn't even speak runner. The big orc swallowed loudly and turned to the elf. Dude, bend, chill. We were all rookies once. Even you. What's your background, friend? Felix pantomimed holding his LMG. I'm an eagle, a former eagle warrior. I cast mostly combat and utility spells. I was also in public relations for a little while. Hippie commando groaned. We're going to have a combat mage facing for us? Clownface took a moment to stare at Hippie Commando. Surprising Felix, he spoke with a thick Scottish brogue. Bend. What is your bloody problem? I don't know, wildcard. Maybe that we're replacing Geppetto with a forest killing human sacrificing brainwashing Aztec? The orc burped. He'd made it through another stake. Geppetto did all of those things, too, and he had fun doing them. Which is arguably worse. Bend looked between Felix and the orc. Eventually, with a pout, he slumped against the wall. Everyone took a few more moments to stare at Bend. The clown turned to face Felix first. Look, I don't know what the hell got into him. The name's Wildcard. I run hacking, driving, and fighting in a pinch. Big and dervish, or America-san if you're from Japan, and that's Bend making an ass of himself. Bend snorted. Is he going to keep being like this? Felix pointed to Bend. I hope not, announced Brianna, judgingly, as attention once again returned to the infiltrator. Look, said Bend, the love of my life was killed in an op against Az technology. She wasn't the only good ghost we lost, either. Found guys split open like fucking fish. Takes you a while to forget that shit, you know? Felix shook his head. I never did blood magic. I left before they could make me. Bend took an aggressive step in Felix's direction. Fucking woo. You want a cookie? Want me to bake you a cake and write the one good as he across it in whipped cream? Standing up, Dervish moved to step in between the two elves and defuse the situation. Bend, I thought the love of your life was a college sophomore. Fuck you, Dervish. Fuck you. You leave Emily out of this. Men, come on, calm down. Now everyone was standing, as Wildcard put his hands on Bend and Dervish's shoulders. The question comes down do we give, a, uh, Pablo Hernandez a chance? Felix looked down at his Kumlink and found a virus alert. Evidently the runner team hadn't left him the best firewalls. Devish grin. I say fuck yeah. Besides, initiating new members is one of my favorite things. Ben scowled, avoiding eye contact with anyone. Eventually, he slumped his shoulders. Yeah, I guess. Wildcard nodded. Okay, so it's initiation. Brianna slapped her palm onto her face. Do you really have to? Devish nodded enthusiastically. 
Hey, I didn't make the rules. Geppetto did. And now it's fallen to us to continue his legacy. Fine, just make it quick and don't be too stupid. Wouldn't dream of it, Brianna. Bend pulled out his taser. Felix eyed it suspiciously. Were they going to test his vest or something? Devish patted wildcard on the back. You're better with words than me or Bend. You wanna handle this one? Sure thing, Dervish. Let me just send that Texan cop a message from the exchange winning him a gift certificate to the Cheesecake Factory. Felix looked between the three teammates. What does any of this have to do with Shadow Runner? <laughs> Felix's question was interrupted as Bend jammed the military strength taser into Felix's balls and shot 10 million volts right into his nutsack. Felix's head collided with one of Dervish's fold-out chairs, upending it as the combat mage crashed to the floor, convulsing wildly. Bend grinned. Welp, let's grab some booze and get him to the basement. Felix awoke strapped to a chair, with aching nuts, breath inexplicably reeking of more tequila, and a hood affixed to his head that forced him to see through Miradea goggles. He panicked and began straining against his bonds, as without a direct line of sight his spells were worthless. Wildcard stood in front of him, in his best business suit, with his clown mask donned, the eye sockets of the mask glowed red, as did Ben's goggles and Dervish's sibaries. All three were swaying a little, and Dervish was holding an almost finished handle of vodka. Wildcard glanced back at Felix. Oil. Boys. Sleeping beauty fucking awakes. As Wildcard began to walk towards Felix, stumbling a little, Felix moaned. What do you want with me? We want to teach you. Wildcard roughly grabbed Felix's shoulders, and leaned in close, the vocoder in his mask distorting his voice sinisterly, about the fucking system. The system? Rookie, where the fuck do you think I grew up? Felix shrugged against his restraints. Uh, Scotland? Wildcard punched Felix flat out across the face before forcing a bottle of mauled liquor into his mouth. Wrong, rookie. I grew up in the bloody Scottish exclusion zone. Ain't nothing left of old Scotland there, just a big stinking glowing radioactive fucking pit. And you know what they do in that pit? Felix gargled against his liquor. That's goddamn right, they don't do nothing cause they're all sinless. From the you fucking K to the you fucking Cass, our society is built on a teetering bloody Jenga tower of the suffering of the unwashed dipshit masses. At this point Felix was legitimately terrified. Devish yelled. You wanna be an unwashed masses, rookie? Isn't it the singular? Unwashed mass. Felix spat blood as Wildcard clocked him across the face, hooking from the other direction this time. Devish leaned into Felix's face and continued yelling. There ain't no singular when you're in a running team, rookie. Now sit the fuck back. Felix spat and choked as Dervish forced the rest of the handle of vodka down his throat. About 5 minutes later, an alternating treatment of violence and alcohol had Felix truly soused. Felix wailed. But what are we gonna do about the system? You gringo motherfuckers haven't told me anything. Wildcard leaned in close enough to kiss Felix. His porcelain texture nose brushed against Felix's own. Rookie, you have asked the question that needs asking. I have? Bend and Dervish saluted Wildcard while Wildcard sniffled like a patriot reciting the national anthem. A great man once told us that our consumerist society runs on greed, and on inferior services that we are expected to say yes thank you to. Well, this man knew his biz. He recognized how people ain't people no more, herded through all stages of our society like fucking sheep. They bleat and they eat and they soak up their mediocrity like mud. It is up to us to be their liberators. To be their saviors. It, it is? Ben slit the ropes binding Felix's hands as Wildcard helped him up, gripping his shoulders tightly. We are the unsung fucking heroes, but today we're gonna sing. We're going to wake them all up. We're going to show this society what it means to be the underclass. You wanna know how? Felix burped up a little vomit. He was very excited to show the world this thing that they were going to show it about, people. We're gonna rob a bloody cheesecake factory in Bellevue. We're gonna rob the shite out of it. There was a long pause. Felix eventually broke the silence with a cry of, Well, fuck yeah. The entire team drunkenly cheered and made for the car. At Felix's command, because the rookie always made the plan during initiation, the team stopped at his hideaway in the Redmond Barrens. After numerous jokes about his shitty living situation, Felix burst out of his closet reed hole in the wall wearing his full eagle warrior regalia. Across from Dervish in his own power armor and wildcard in his SWAT armor, the team was loaded for bear. As the team walked back to the car, LMG, ha, 
shotgun, and heavy taser in hand, Ben asked. Well, what's the plan, Azzy? Newbie always makes the plan. Felix took a few moments to think. I think. Everyone looked at Felix expectantly. I think, we should burst through the front door, kick their asses. He paused again. Devish's metal hands clinked in a go on motion. I think we should burst in through the front door, kick their asses, and take all their shit. Ben gawked at Felix. That's the plan? That's the plan. Wildcard electronically set his VAR to full auto, Dervish ejected his clip of stun shells and replaced it with an extended magazine of stick shock. Dervish nodded approvingly and responded. That is a fucking excellent plan. El Dinero and La Falda Mithafakias. That was all the warning given to the upper middle class families and dating couples and local fashionistas of the Bellevue branch of the Cheesecake Factory before the door literally exploded from one of Felix's spells. As the dumbfounded diners gawked, an Aztec eagle warrior in full regalia stomped into the restaurant, followed by a man in SWAT gear wearing a clown mask and America San, the Nico Nico Dalga meme. A matron stood up shakily from a menu stand and said, I'm calling the... I take no shit from bitches you American fucks. With that, Felix threw his arm forward, caught the maitre d's chest, and flipped him into a tasteful hardwood display like a pro wrestler. Wildcard lowered his gun a little. Um, I think we gave Rocky a little too much to drink. Dervish fired his shotgun in the air. Roll with it, dude. Everyone dropped their cred sticks. This is a robbery. In the back of the restaurant, a lone Texan slowly stood and drew his cavalier deputy. Palisha. With a brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
we're gonna need you to hit him with something with a good area, then we'll move for the car while laying down suppressive fire. Felix nodded. Tress, Dos, you know. The team punched out of the back entrance in a cacophony of gunfire, with Felix first out of the breach, then wildcard and dervish, then bend. They alternated between running at full tilt and keeping the cops behind cover, before piling into the car. There was a metal clinking noise as a grenade landed on the roof of the car. Acting on instinct, Bend cast a levitate spell and flung it back onto the hood of the SWAT van. The startled cops promptly began vaulting over the adjacent cards. Wildcard turned to yell at Bend, feverishly buckling his seat belts. Bend. What the bloody hell was that? I just saved our lives from that grenade. You threw it at the fucking cops. Fuck. With a horrible kerbang noise, the front of the SWAT van caved, marking the second truck the team had destroyed in the last 15 minutes. Glass shattered and car alarms shouted throughout the parking lot. Just drive, yelled Dervish, as more sirens closed in. The car tore into the streets of the poshest, most tastefully decorated, lowest crime neighborhood with somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 police interceptors, 6 police cars, and another SWAT van in tow. As Joseph Green slowly stood up in the parking lot, without the use of his arms, coughing at the exhaust, gun smoke, and other assorted smoke in the air, he yelled. God damn it. With all windows rolled down, and the runners inside returning fire on the cops. Wildcard had to maneuver more and more tightly through the promenades of Bellevue as the team saw increasingly more pursuit. Compounding this, of course, was the fact that everyone was still mildly to very inebriated with the possible exception of super metabolism dervish. Wildcard yelled, as a helicopter raced overhead. I'm going to get on the freeway. Dervish angrily yelled back. What? That's insane. We'll be sitting ducks. It's better than hitting a building. As Wildcard slammed up the on-ramp, ramping onto the shoulder to evade traffic, he considered that this might be an especially ignominious end for the team. His car hit its max speed near 280 miles per hour. Then it kept going. Wildcard looked in the mirror to see a glaring representation of Tanatia, the Shining One, otherwise known in this instance as a Force 8 guidance spirit. Felix what did you do? I asked it to make us go faster. How much faster? I don't know how. The car had now outpaced the helicopter, and appeared to be racing with the planes lifting off from SeaTac. Cars turned to mere blurs, even ones heading in the same direction as the team. Wildcard stayed on the shoulder, unwilling to even try to dodge the cars. Oh she I, I, I. The entire team sank back into their seats as a crack of noise rang in their ears. Soon, the planes were blurs, as was everything else on earth. You see, a guidance or man spirit who uses movement multiplies the speed of its target by its force. As Dervish's player calculated for us at this point. 280 multiplied by 8 equals 2240 miles per hour. At this point, GM made the executive ruling that movement also cancels out the force of friction, so Wildcard's car didn't just explode by the third sonic boom. Recognizing that it was only a matter of time before the car torpedoed clear through a freeway wall and into a building, Bend, Felix, and the Guardian Spirit put concerted effort into levitating the car, at least enough to clear them a route out to the Snarhamish boondocks. Slowly but surely, its wheels spinning so fast that they were actually causing spontaneous flames to appear, Wildcard's car lifted off, rising above the oncoming traffic. Ben and Felix's seatbelts snapped open, the buttons depressed by sheer force of air against the plastic and metal. The entire team realized with terror that they couldn't breathe. As the car sailed over the border of Bellevue into Snarhamish, racing over treetops and houses and blasting the leaves and shingles off of them, respectively the second sonic boom sounded. Krakuum. That's Mach 3, for those of you at home. Nearly as fast as the top speed of an SR-71 Blackbird, whose default maneuver for avoiding a locked-on missile is merely to accelerate. Why yes, I am a mechanical aerospace engineer. How could you tell? Magic can get really, really ridiculous. And awesome. But mostly ridiculous. Although he'd been trying to hold onto the grip above his seat, Dervish's fingers finally pried apart one by one, and his fist smacked loudly into his face and remained stuck there. Felix was smushed into the back seats of the car, while Bend was up against the rear window, which was made of double layer bulletproof glass that was nevertheless cracking. The car hit its third sonic boom as it neared Salish territory, which then hit the car again as the car began to slow down once more. Deep in Salish farmland, the car began decelerating, 
and as it decelerated it descended, until it eventually hit a wheat field at about 300 miles an hour. The second sonic boom hit again, finally blowing out the rear window, as the car neared 150. Bend hastily Gecko gripped the interior of the car as he flopped like a ragdoll. Slowly the car came to a stop, just in time to vault the edge of the field onto a country road. There was a brief pause as, shaky need, the team stumbled out of the car. Felix began vomiting profusely out of his cracked faceplate right as the original sonic boom hit, sending everyone sprawling onto their asses. Felix's arm servo motors word as he attempted to stand up again while still hosing down his own face and everything in a direct 90 degree angle away from his face. And he slipped and tumbled repeatedly in his own vomit before finally lying still. Wildcard roughly grabbed the chin of his mask and threw it off of his face, sending it arcing into a roadside ditch, before joining Felix in his debasement. Bend made gurgling noises, but lay flat on his back on the road and managed to fight it down. Aside from a bruised face, Dervish was mostly okay. He kicked Wildcard in the side softly. So, I'm thinking we lilo for a little while. A defensive interceptor missile sailed overhead and landed somewhere in the forest. Dervish and Wildcard winced at the explosion. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that's a good idea. I'll take the rookie. With a loud clang, a hubcap fell off the Hyundai. Felix woke up in a strange bedroom in a suburban house at 2 in the morning. His interface alerted him that he'd only had an hour of sleep. This was an important. Perimeter was important. He didn't know whose house this was. Still quite drunk, he stumbled towards the closet, and threw it open, revealing his mil-spec armor. Hastily, he donned it, and backed into the corner of the closet, bracing his gun and hitting the joint locks on his armor so that he wouldn't have to rely on his own strength. Not when he was so tired. And drunk. And dehydrated. And did he have internal bruising? Felix promptly passed out again in his armor, standing up and braced against the back of the closet. The closet was opened in the morning by Wildcard. Wildcard was wearing nothing but his clown mask and a pair of boxer briefs that his cock was hanging halfway out of, and holding a cup of coffee and a bowl of cereal. Felix? Hello? You in there? Felix promptly started awakened, with all of his joints still locked, toppled forward and face planted directly onto the hardwood floor. Groaning loudly at the mighty and eternal god king of all hangovers, he unlocked his joints and slowly rolled over, bleeding from the nose. My everything hurts. Well... Hopefully your pride doesn't, rookie, because I've got good news. Ha. Huh. You passed initiation. Felix's eyes lidded. Do I get a street name now? Wildcard poked the servos on Felix's elbow with his toe. Of course you do. Welcome to the team, Locke. Shadow Run Story Time 16 End. I enjoyed that one, I have to say. I'm a bit hesitant. I'm, I'm always like this. Like, you know, whenever they get a new member on the team, I'm like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I like the old ones, you know. And, like, you know, like I am very fond of Chipato. I hope he comes back. I hope we see him from time to time. You know, same with 2D. But Felix, he ain't a bad addition to the team at all. Though, like, you know, can we just stop for a wee second and talk about that getaway? That was fucking amazing. That, to me, is... It, it, there's two great getaway scenes I think that I've done on this channel and that has to be one of them and the other one is definitely the All Guards Party remember in part 10 when they're on that type comet and they're <laughs> they get chased by that devil fish and they're in a fit to live leave on fuck that was that was great I loved that one I thought that was fucking hilarious so I did uh, but no I, I fuck I love a good cheese factory heist now whenever someone joins it, it's always for a fun episode I love the backstory I think they do a really good job on it and like you know like hope you guys enjoyed it too but this is an end of Shadowgun week um, I hope you boys enjoyed it I know I really enjoy Shadowgun I think it's probably my favourite ongoing story that I've been doing for a long time at the minute on this channel and it, it, it for me it just gets kind of like set to the side sometimes you know and it gets set to the side more often than i would like it to so i really really want to get this series all finished um as soon as i'm not gonna like you know go balls to the wolves per se at it but it will be done this is part 16 and there is still how many let me let's see i've got them in front of me one two three four five six seven yeah, something like that anyway. Um, <clears throat> so there's still quite a few parts to go. And look, you guys are going to love it. I love it. So I hope you guys will enjoy it too. 
But look, I'm rambling. I'll talk to you boys later, and hopefully the next Shadow Run video won't be too long away. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! What the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services! It's time to stop!